Well, let's look at another example of total differential. Uh, my emphasis for an application is one that's kind of based on the the total approximate error in a measurement. There are other uses for the differential, but this one is rather meaningful because in any science or lab situation, as a student, you know that the error of your measure is always playing a factor, and total differentials definitely has something to say about that. So let's suppose we have a box, a rectangular box. All right, apparently I can't really talk while I'm drawing. Hopefully that passes for a rectangular box. And let's suppose that this is the width of the box, and this would be the length of the box, and this would be the height of the box. We're not going to calculate volume. What we're going to look at is the surface area. The surface area. So the surface area is found by well, in this case, there are six sides to the box. We can see three of them. It's by adding up the area of all six of the sides. And each side is a rectangle. So we have two sides that would be, uh, well, this one here. So we'd have two of those, two times WH. But then we'd also have two sides over here, two of that one, and we would have two of, of this top and bottom, two of each of those. So lots of ways of writing it out. Let's just say the next one is two of the top and bottoms, two times W times L. And then there are two of this side here, which is um, H times L. So this is our total surface area. Now, furthermore, let's suppose that the width was going to be 5 centimeters, and the length 8 centimeters, and the height 2 centimeters. I think you will find that if you find the area of all th three of these sides and then double them for the other part of the box you can't see, that the surface area, I'm just going to call it S, all right, I'm just going to call it S, is supposed to be exactly 132, 32, 132 square centimeters. So you can have pause me and calculate that out and go back and double check that. But like before, the machine that makes these boxes is not 100% perfect. It has an error of measurement. And it turns out the part of the machine that builds the bottom of the box, that the width and the length have the same exact error of measurement and that would be 0 0.1 centimeters or millimeter. And it might be accurate to actually say it's less than or equal to that. This number here is really a statement of this is the biggest the error will be. It could be smaller. It could be smaller. But the part of the machine that builds the height, well, it needs to be updated because its error is 0 0.3 centimeters or 3 millimeters. So our question is, is how accurate is the surface air area if we take into consideration these approximations? So to do this, what we need to do is is find the approximate change in surface area and there are three variables so we have three variables at stake here
we need to find the derivative of the surface area with respect to W times dW. Find the partial derivative of the surface area with respect to length times dL and then find the partial derivative of the surface area with respect to height times dH. Three variable case. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, show this and then um, give you a task to do some computing on your own and then we can meet back up again and look at us at an answer. So let's do this calculation here. Uh, ds is equal to, so now this is the, what's it called? The total differential. The total differential. ds. So what is the derivative of this with respect to w? Well, there are two terms with w in it. And the derivative of w is 1. So I'm going to get here. 2h plus 2l and that's going to be multiplied by dw. That's this term. Plus if l is the variable that has no l, it's a constant so derivative is 0. I'm going to get 2w plus 2h multiplied by dl Finally, one more plus sign, the derivative with respect to h is 2w plus 2l dh. So this is the total differential. So now here is the question. What if you replace h with 2 and w with 5 and l with 8? and dw was 0 0.1 and dl was 0 0.1 and dh was 0 0.3. What would you get if you did the substitution? What would ds equal if you went through that substitution? So this is where you pause and you substitute numbers and maybe use a calculating device. Maybe you don't have to use a calculating device for this one. This one isn't too bad without a calculator. And when we come back, let's compare notes and see if we got the same thing. Okay, I'm back. I got 11.2 and the units would be square centimeters since we were finding an approximate, whoops, approximate change or error in the surface area. If the arithmetic is simple enough, I don't let students use a calculator on the exam in my room. And if I do let them use a calculator, then the arithmetic is going to be messier than this. And we'll probably use a different function than that one. That's not too difficult of a function to work with. Now, like we did last time, I'm sort of curious, what is the percent error or change? And to do that, what we would do is we would take the 11.2 here and divide it by the actual surface area of 132 and we find ourselves at about 8.5%. It's not exactly, but it's close to 8.5%. And again, the question might be, is that significant? Well, it depends on what the boss asks for. If the boss asks for something within 10%, we're good. This machine can stay. If the boss wants it more accurate, then we need a machine with more accuracy than this. Starting to get the pattern here? All right, I might have one more example for you. 
So stick around for another segment.